Hey, Joe Zarzer here with another installment of Zarzer Law TV. Today we're going to talk about maritime law. People maybe hear that phrase and they don't know exactly what it means. Uh, of course, I didn't until I went to law school and took a course on maritime law. And since then, of course, I've worked on cases involving maritime law in a personal injury practice. Maritime law basically is any action, whether it be personal injury or even uh, uh, workers' compensation type cases, anything that happens on the a navigable waterway. And of course, navigable is another fancy term, but it basically means any, commercial, any, any uh, waterway that's able to be used by commercial vessels. If a commercial vessel can use a waterway, then it's a navigable waterway. If, if an accident happens on a navigable waterway, it is going to be governed by maritime law. And here's why that's important. Even if you're technically in state waters, the, if maritime law applies, which it will on virtually every waterway, because most of them are navigable, then maritime law will apply to the case, which will control sometimes the how the case is handled. Maritime law is a federal body of law, not a state body of law. And so you've got a state body of law in Florida, and then you've got federal maritime law. If an accident were to happen on a street in Florida, Florida state law would apply. If, if an accident happens on a navigable waterway, even in state waters, Florida waters, that state law would apply, but if it's on a navigable waterway, maritime law is going to apply to that accident also. And that's a significant thing because maritime law can control the outcome of the case and can actually pose uh, hurdles for an injured party in recovering uh, from an injury that would otherwise be easier, if you will, to recover from if it happened on land. For instance, in maritime law, there is a concept known as exoneration or limitation. A ship owner can be exonerated or relieved from liability or can limit their liability to the value of the boat or the vessel that they're on at the time the injury occurs simply by asking for maritime law to apply. So there's a concept in maritime law called the limitation or exoneration of liability. And if maritime law applies and if a ship owner does the right things to uh, trigger the workings of exoneration and limitation of liability, then your injury, would be, your injury claim would be limited to the value of the vessel that caused the injury. That can be very significant, as you can imagine, if you're on a jet ski, for instance, and another jet ski runs into you and is negligent and causes some catastrophic injury or death to you or your family member, and your damages could be limited to the value of that jet ski under maritime law. Obviously, that's a significant problem for your recovery if that's the case. If you're not familiar with maritime law, you don't know the ways around this limitation of liability or exoneration concept. And if you're only uh, uh, verbose or if you're only uh, fluent in state law in Florida on land and not the maritime law, you may not be uh, know about these concepts. It's important if you're injured, obviously, on a navigable waterway or any waterway that you consider hiring a law firm that has experience dealing with maritime injuries, since they're not typical injuries that would happen on land, they're governed by different law. At Zarja Law, we handle maritime cases. We handle, uh, obviously we handle cases on land, but we also handle all types of, uh, of maritime accidents, whether they be vessel on vessel, jet ski on jet ski. Sometimes you can have a dock uh, incident that is also controlled by maritime law. Uh, you can find us on the web at zarzalaw.com if you have other maritime type questions. 
You can also always call us at 855-HIRE-JOE. Uh, I would urge you, if you have a maritime accident, to make sure you hire a firm that has experience with maritime cases. Thank you and take care.